Hi everybody and welcome. Today's project is going to be a adjustable dog collar and for the adjustable part I will be using a pink biothene adapter. If you're not familiar with an adapter for your collar I will leave a link below. I show you guys how to make the adapter. You can make it with biothene, you can also make it with leather if you want. Uh, so I'll leave a link below for that. Also for this color I will be adding a few beads. I have um, some pericord beads from pericordgalaxy.com in blue, pink, and purple. Whoops. And this is what they look like. They have little paw prints on the inside um, and I'm going to be using two blue, two pink, and one purple. The cord that I'll be using on this project, first this dip dyed uh, 550 pericord right here. I get this cord at um, EU, sorry, pericord EU, and it's called, I believe, Universe, and um, I'm going to leave a link below for um, this company. They have some really fantastic colors for the dip dyed cord and they have some other things that I haven't been able to find anywhere else so you might want to check them out. But they have this really they have really pretty um, dip dyed cords. So I'm going to be using this uh, cord right here and then I have another strand of that cord that I'll be using. And um, I have in the two sorry in the 550 I have also this fuchsia cord, which is from pericordgalaxy.com. I have my white, which is also from pericordgalaxy.com. And I have the 275 cord um, in white, and that's again from pericordgalaxy.com. And again, I will leave all the links to what I use uh, down below for you guys. So I have my double cows hitch hooked up already to my jig. If you're not familiar with how to do the double cows hitch for your projects, I will leave a link below. I have um, a link where I show you guys how to do the double cows hitch and also how to hook it up to your jig. Also my jig, I will leave a link below if you aren't interested in this um, particular jig. This is a speedy jig. Um, and I do have an affiliated link with them, so I will leave all that information below if you're interested. And if you only plan on doing one or a couple of projects, um, you can make a jig out of boards with uh, two nails at the top and two nails at the bottom. So before we get started, I want to explain how I add my beads to it. So for me, what I like to do is I take from the top of my cord to the bottom of my cord. I don't count any um, extra hardware that I have on there. So I take from here all the way to the bottom of the pericord. I take how many inches that is and then I divide that by how many beads I have. So if this is say 10 inches and I divide by 5 beads then I'm going to put a bead on every 2 inches to make it evenly through the collar. Now we can just start adding our cords and the way I'm going to be doing this is I am going to be using a pericord needle. I get mine um, at pericordgalaxy.com. I have ordered them off of Amazon before and the screw top to where you screw in your cord I've had trouble with the screw top, like the cord staying in. I do recommend getting them from pericordgalaxy.com because I have never had a problem with their pericord needles. Now, if you don't have one of these, it's not the end of the world. You do, you can um, push your cord through without one. It just makes it a little bit easier for you. 
So the first cord that I'm going to be adding is the white and you can loosen up your cow's hitches at the top of your work just a little bit so you can push either your needle or just push your cord through. And what you're going to do is you're going to go right in the middle of both cow's hitches. So you're going to go right through the middle of the cow's hitches. And then you're going to just pull it through the other side and you're going to bring the white to the middle at the top of your work. Next I'm going to be adding the other dip dyed cord. And you're going to do the exact same thing. You're just going to go right through the both cow's hitches to the other side and pull it to the middle at the top of your work. Next I'm going to be adding the fuchsia and what I want to do with this cord is I'm going to go right in between the first cow's hitch so you can go right in between the cow's hitch. And then you're going to go underneath the, that second stitch and then the next stitch and you're going to come up in between that second cow's hitch. So you're just going to go in between the first one, underneath those two stitches that are right next to each other in the middle, and then up through the second cow's hitch, just like that, pull it to the other side, and then bring it to the middle at the top of your work. For the 275 cord, the white one, you're going to do the exact same thing that you just did with the fuchsia. You're going to go in between the first cow's hitch, underneath the two stitches, up through the second cow's hitch, pull it through to the other side, and bring it to the middle at the top of your work. So I'm going to be starting on my right side with the uh, smaller bundle of dip dyed cord and that's the cord that's coming again right out of the bottom part of my uh, cow's hitch. And what I want to do is I want to go underneath this long cord on my right side, go right up the middle and then over that second cord on my left side. So you're basically just going right up the middle and then over. So I'm going to take my bundle on my right, I'm going to go underneath, right up the middle, and then over that second cord. Next I'm going to take my smaller bundle of dip dyed on my left side, and I'm going to take it underneath the cord that I just worked. So it goes right underneath, and I'm going to do the same thing, just a mirror image, and I'm going to go underneath now this first cord that is on my left now, right up the middle and then over that second cord on my right. So go underneath, right up the middle and then over that second cord on my right. And then you have kind of like a little triangle here. Now I'm going to take the white on my right side and I want to go underneath all of my work and then come right up the middle of the two cords. So I'm going to go underneath and right up the middle and then you have your loop that you just made with the dip dyed on the right side. You're going to go in between the white and the dip dyed cord right in that hole right there. So you're going to just go down that loop. Now I'm going to take the one on the left. I'm going to go underneath all my work right up the middle. And then again you made this loop right here on the left side. You're going to go in between the white and your loop right here. Just go down that loop. Next I'm going to take the other dip dyed cord which is the longer bundle and I'm going to start on my right. You have these two horizontal dip dyed cords right here in the middle. You can pull up on those a little bit. The right center in the middle of your work. Next you're going to take your dip dyed on the right side 
and you're going to go around those two dip dyed cords and then you're going to go out the right side. So you're just going to take your cord, go over and around and out the right side. So take your cord, go over and around and out the right. Take your longer bundle on the left side now and you're going to go again over those two horizontal cords but you're going to come out the left. So go over and around and out the left. Next you're going to take your fuchsia and you're going to do the same thing that you just did um, with the longer dip dyed bundles. You're going to go and take the one on the right, you're going to go over and around and out the right. Take the one on the left, go over and around and out the left side of your cord. And now you can take your 275 white cords and you're going to do the same. You're just going to go over and around and out the right with the right cord. Then take your left and go over and around and out the left. And then you can just tighten it up. Once you have it tightened, you can just start that weave all over again. So we're going to start on our right side with the smaller bundle of dip dyed cord. And we're going to go underneath the first cord on the right, right up the middle, and then over that second cord. Take your smaller bundle on the left side now and take it underneath the cord that you just worked. Underneath that first cord on the left, right up the middle over that second cord on the right. Take your white on the right side now, go underneath all of your work, come up the middle and then down that loop that you just made. Take your white on the left side now, go underneath, come up the middle, and then down that loop that you made on the left side. Now you can pick up on those two horizontal cords. Take your longer bundle of your dip dyed, and you're going to take it over those two horizontal cords around and out the right. Take the one on the left now. You're going to go over those two horizontal cords around and out the left. Take your fuchsia on the right side. Go over and around those two horizontal cords and out the right. Take your fuchsia on the left, go over and around and out the left. Now take your 275 cords and you're going to go over those two horizontal cords with the right 275 and come out the right side. Take the one on the left, go around and out the left and then tighten it up. Okay, so I went an extra one down and now I am at the spot where I would put my bead on and I wanted to show you guys how I do that from the start of the weave all the way until the end. So to put my bead on, I'm going to do the weave until the same until I get to the 275 white cord. So I'm going to start on my right. I'm going to go underneath, right up the middle, and over with my smaller bundle of dip dyed. I'm going to take the one on the left. I'm going to go underneath the cord that I just worked. And I'm going to go underneath and over that second cord. 
I'm going to take the white on my right side now and I'm going to go underneath my work right up the middle and then down that loop on my right. Take the one on the left now, go underneath my work right up the middle and then down that loop on my left side. Now I'm going to find those two horizontal pieces. I'm going to take the larger bundle of dip dyed on my right side. I'm going to go over those cords, around them and out the right. Take the one on the left, go over and around and out the left. Take the fuchsia on the right now. And I'm going to go over those cords, those horizontal cords, around and out the right. Take the one on the left now, go over and around and out the left. And now I'm at the spot where I would put on my bead. So I'm going to be putting on this light pink one and I'm going to find the ends of my 275 cord and these, um, I believe these are four millimeters so they're, they're got a pretty decent hole and I'm going to push my cord through So I push both cords through the bead and I'm going to pull it all the way down and what I'd like to do now is I'm going to make sure that they, the cords haven't crisscrossed at all and then I'm going to just continue what I was doing with the other top weaves that I've already done. I'm going to take the cord that is on my right side, I'm going to go around those two horizontal cords and pull it to the right. Take the one on the left, go around and pull it to the left. And now I'm just going to tighten it up. Once you have that tightened, you're just going to continue doing that same weave until you get to the spot where you want to put your next bead on and you'll put it on the same way and you'll just keep going down the collar. I'm gonna do a couple real quick so you can see how the bead sits on the collar. So I went a couple down so you could see uh, what it looks like after the bead is put on. And I'm gonna continue this weave all the way down to the end of the collar. I will show you guys how I do my tie off and what it looks like when it's completely done and the biothene is on. Okay, so I'm at the end of my collar and I took it off my jig and now we can sew in the ends and the cords that I'm going to be sewing in are the ones that are coming directly out of the top part of the collar so I am going to be doing um, the dip dyed cord, the fuchsia cord, and the 275 white cord and you can see they are coming out of the top part of the collar and then the dip dye that are coming out of the side with the white those will be cut and melted where they are so I'm going to start with the dip dye cord on my right side and you have a hole or a gap between your work and your two cows hitches you're going to stick your dip dyed cord through that gap you're also going to do the dip dye cord on the opposite side and the two fuchsia cords will also go through that gap next you're going to take your 275 white cords and you want to put your cord right between the two cows hitches you have a, a small hole and that's where your 275 cords are going to go 
so they'll both go through that hole. And they're so small with my needle that I kind of have to feed it through. So you just feed it through. And I'll do the same with the other cord. And now we can start to cut and burn. I like to cut my uh, cords that are coming directly out of the sides first. And I like to go about a quarter of an inch up or a half an inch. I like to fray them out a little bit. I think they burn a better cap that way. And I'm going to be using my scissors to squish that metal part down. And I have this giant lighter today. Um, so I'm going to just melt it. Try not to let it catch on fire. And then I'm going to squish that down. I'm going to do the blue now. I'm going to squish that down. I'll do the same on the opposite side. Once you have the sides done, you can start the middle cords. I'm going to start uh, with my two fuchsias that are in the middle and I'm going to cut them the same length and I'll probably burn them one at a time. Actually, I'm going to try and burn them together. And I will cut and burn the rest the same way and squish them down, but I will be doing these one at a time. So after you have them um, cut and melted, squashed down, you can hook your biotene up to what you have now and it should work perfectly fine. But I do like to put some Gorilla Glue on these um, ends that I just melted just for some extra security. So I use clear non-foaming Gorilla Glue. It's really important that you get the non-foaming kind. Um, I've in the, When I first started doing collars and leashes and using the, the glue, I actually picked up the foam kind and it made such a mess. So please be careful um, and get the non-foaming clear. So you just want to put a little bit on the ends and I don't have much in my bottle. There we go. And then I'm just going to rub it all around the ends. Um, this is waterproof so it won't rub off on your dog or anything like that. And I'm going to let this dry for a few hours. And I will hook up the biothene and I will let you guys see what it looks like when the biothene is hooked up. The one thing that I am disappointed about this collar is that I, I like the pericord. I think that it's very pretty. I'm not too fond of the beads. The beads are kind of big and I think that if you used a larger cord in the middle it would look a little bit better than to use the 275 cord. Um, I think that the hole wouldn't show as much maybe. I don't know. If you guys use these beads, let me know um, what you uh, like to use in them. Um, I have other ones that are have a large hole like this and I have been debating on what to use and maybe next time I'll try a, a thicker cord in the middle um, but the colors do match perfectly and again I'll show you guys what it looks like when I have the biothene attached. 